Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. Man, y'all are loving our Steam Deck video from last week, and judging by the votes over at the community tab, you guys are just begging for more of that content. So for those of you that voted for the DLSS versus FSR content, guys, just sit tight. We're actually collecting the data right now, and we're surely going to be getting back to that in just a bit. Now, back to the Steam Deck. Now, I've been watching closely to the comment section, and it does appear that there's a pretty big and glaring omission to my video, and then that is, what operating system am I running all of my tests in? Now, I've done all sorts of content here on the channel, from you know GPUs to motherboard and CPU reviews, and probably 99% of the content here has all been focused on Windows 10 running the latest update, and you know, sure enough, the Steam Deck is going to be running a version of Linux. So it got me thinking, how is my setup going to be able to handle Linux and how is that going to translate over into the Steam Deck experience? So rather than speculate, let's actually put the hardware to the test. Now I have seen all sorts of mixed results on the internet and I've even seen some reports from over at deckmods.net that they were able to get a 50% performance improvement when going over to the Linux operating system. Now that seems a bit overly optimistic. So at least in today's video, we'll be able to either confirm or deny their results, but also give you guys a sneak peek of the Linux performance you'll see with the Steam Deck. All right, well, we're actually getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's answer a few basic questions before we go any further. Now, what exactly is Steam OS? Now, Steam OS is Valve's interpretation of what Linux should be, and that's going to be based off of the Arch Linux distribution. Taking another step back, Arch Linux is a more minimalist approach when it comes to a Linux distribution that removes a lot of the bloatware that's included with the likes of uh, Ubuntu, or Fordora, while still maintaining some of the more cutting edge and bleeding feature sets that are required for this bleeding edge technology. Now, SteamOS used to be based off of Debian, which is actually kind of the base for Ubuntu, but I'm guessing that by looking at Arch Linux and seeing just how good of a foundation it's gonna be, it's gonna enable them to build extra feature sets that are going to actually leverage the hardware they're basing in their Steam Deck. Primarily those little touchpads they have, the uh, SD card for quick resume, and any of those other bells and whistles that come along with your Steam Deck. Now, you might have heard a couple other different buzzwords in the marketing material, and one of those that I want to focus on here is Proton. What actually is Proton? Now, with the Steam Deck, Valve commits to enabling their entire Steam library on the device, but unfortunately, the majority of games, they just don't work inside of Linux, because those games were based off of Windows APIs and DirectX calls, and that just doesn't translate into the Linux environment. Now, Valve created the Proton technology, which is based off of the Wine compatibility layer in order to bridge that gap. And by doing so, they're able to make uh, on-the-time translations between DirectX calls and you know, Linux consumable calls in order to speed up and improve the performance, which doesn't require any types of emulation or virtual machines to actually run. Or better translated, instead of doing any user in, you know, tweaking or setup or anything, Valve is going to be able to implement a pretty much turnkey approach when it comes to enabling these Windows applications inside of the Steam Deck. So with all this information, why does any of this actually matter? Well, there's three important things to keep in mind. Now remember, and this is pretty obvious at this point, SteamOS is not Windows. So applications that we usually run in our Windows devices, such as, you know, Hardware Info, IDA64, even, you know, frame rate monitoring tools like uh, Fraps or MSI Afterburner, they don't directly work on the Steam Deck or inside of Arch Linux. Now, there could be some alternatives out there, or you could tweak the setups in order to get it to work correctly, but translating straight from Windows to Linux, it's not as straightforward as you might think. And as straightforward as the marketing sounds for the SteamOS and Proton, there is unfortunately a little bit of overhead that's required in order to translate those Windows API calls into Linux executable commands. Proton does add a little bit of additional computation required to render our frames, which could impact our performance in certain types of games. And lastly, Proton, it doesn't work in 100% of games. Now, Steam has committed to enabling all of their games in their library, like I've said in the past, 
But if you are concerned, I definitely recommend you guys check out ProtonDB.com and see what level of support currently exists for your particular games. There's games that have like native support. Those are usually colored in green, but then there's colors like platinum, which requires very minimal tweaking, gold, silver, bronze, and then of course busted. So again, I highly recommend y'all go to that website and check out the games you're going to be playing to see if it actually works inside of Proton. Now with all the background set, let's talk about this week's video. Now if you've checked out last week's video, we tested all of the different specifications when it comes to the Steam Deck, like the core clocks, the core count, the GPU clocks, and the memory speeds. We're going to be taking all the lessons we learned from that video and applying it into today's video. So we're wiping our hard drives and we are going off of a fresh installation of Manjaro while also running Steam with Proton enabled. Now, I say Steam for a reason here, because remember, we're going back to Linux. That doesn't mean we're going to have access to our Epic Game Store, our Origin Games, or even our Ubisoft platforms. And there's probably a way to run that kind of stuff inside of Linux, but I don't really have the time to figure all that out. So we are going to be using a reduced set of games based on last week's results. Now, I'm going to be testing all of the games today using the exact same settings as last week, which is going to include overclocking our iGPU up to 2.3 gigahertz, runner, running our memory data rate at a blazing fast DDR4 4200 at a one to one memory clock ratio, which is actually pretty impressive for this part. Now, I'm also going to be uh, overclocking our cores to 3.5 gigahertz to better match the Steam Deck, and I'm also going to be disabling four cores for a total of four cores. If you want to see more information on how I came to those specific specs, I'll post a link down in the description so y'all can catch yourselves up. Now lastly, I'm going to be running each of the games through Steam's Proton version 6.3. I did do a little bit of analysis with the experimental branch, but I really didn't see much of a performance improvement or performance de decrease using that particular branch. Now, keep in mind that there are some games on this list that do support Linux natively. However, I don't really have, you know, the time or the bandwidth to kind of, you know, go through all the different permutations of how those games are supported. So for simplicity and to be as transparent as possible, each game tested today is using the Proton compatibility layer. With all that said, let's go to the chart. That's right. There's only one chart today. Now the top half of the chart is going to have all of our Windows 10 results from last week and the bottom half of our chart is going to have our fresh Manjaro Linux operating system while running our games through the Proton 6.3 compatibility layer. Now our top performing game of Grand Theft Auto 5 with Windows was able to run at 73 FPS which is actually really good for this tiny little APU. However, utilizing the Proton 6.3 compatibility layer Man, Grand Theft Auto goes all the way down to 62 FPS, which is an 11 FPS drop, which is actually a significant redu reduction in frames. However, our 1% lows do remain about the same, and fortunately for us, we are able to get right at 60 FPS. So, despite the reduction in our performance, we are still able to cap out our Steam Deck. Now going into Doom Eternal, we actually see the opposite happening. When running in Windows 10, we are able to get 56 FPS, but going into the Linux plus Proton 6.3, we actually improve our frame rate by 8 FPS. This could be due to the nature of running Vulkan in a native environment, while also leveraging more of our resources due to the less overhead coming from the Manjaro operating system. Now the next game on our list, Necromunda Higher Gun, we're actually able to stay within one FPS by going into the Linux operating system. Now keep in mind, Necromunda also has access to the Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which we'll talk about briefly towards the end of the video. So 53 to 52 FPS is still a pretty good performance for the Steam Deck comparison. Now Horizon Zero Dawn actually kind of surprised me here. When we ran it in Windows, we were able to get 48 FPS, which is a pretty good result from our little APU. But unfortunately, going into our Linux environment and utilizing Proton 6.3, we actually lose 10 FPS, which is actually a considerable drop, also considering our 1% lows go to right at 21 FPS. Now, this is likely due to the extra overhead when it comes to translating the DirectX 12 APIs into a more Linux-friendly format. However, I don't have a way to confirm that, but keep in mind this is still above 30 FPS, which is above the Steam Deck's targeted 720p 30 FPS uh, gaming threshold. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider also sees a bit of a performance drop by about 4 FPS, but again, it's not as bad as some of the other games. 
but fortunately we are above 30 FPS with both the 1% low and our average frame rate, so I think the performance reduction, it seems pretty reasonable. But as we saw with Doom Eternal, Dirt 5 sees a 3 FPS improvement and actually sees a 2 FPS improvement on the 1% lows, which is always a good thing in our book. Now, I find this quite interesting because this is again another DirectX title that utilizes a lot of graphical horsepower to run, but I do believe that maybe the it has less overhead when it comes to the actual translation of the DirectX calls, but I don't really have a good way to confirm or deny that. However, the performance here is better than with Windows, so I would imagine the Steam Deck performance would be right in line. Now finishing us up here is Control, and again, we only see a 1 FPS drop, our 1% lows are still right in line, so I do think that we are going to have a pretty decent playable experience, even at medium detail settings with Control. Oh man, it feels really good to only have to cover a single chart in our reviews, so let's do a brief high-level summary of the observations that we saw. Now, on the one hand, we saw a couple of different games that saw a sizable performance hit when going from the traditional Windows environment into the Linux-based Proton 6.3 compatibility layer. Now, this could be concerning because with the performance loss in using DirectX 12 calls, most games are starting to be released with DirectX 12's functionality, so that could be a bad thing with some future looking games. However, if the games support DirectX 11 or if Steam's able to kind of balance the performance loss that's lost there, hopefully that translates into a better performing experience with the Steam Deck. Also, let's keep in mind that the Steam Deck's performance floor is 720p 30fps. So even if our results are pretty pessimistic here, we are still above that performance floor. So there is pretty good opportunity to have even better performance in the final production units. But on the other hand, we actually saw quite a bit of performance improvement when running some different games that are more native to the Linux experience. Now, again, Doom Eternal is based off of the Vulkan API, so it's entirely possible that the Proton compatibility layer is able to translate that software into a better gaming experience. But this is also pretty promising because games like Red Dead Redemption 2, No Man's Sky, and some other games are starting to utilize more and more of the Vulkan API in their rendering engines, so this could be a good opportunity for the Steam Deck to actually improve the performance compared to the native Windows 10 devices. Now let's quickly circle back to Necromunda Higher Gun, because remember, I mentioned Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and in last week's video, we saw some pretty sizable gains when going from, you know, native resolutions all the way up to, you know, about the quality levels where I recommended. And sure enough, with the Linux distribution with the Steam OS, we should be able to enable Fidelity FX Super Resolution, and we still see some pretty decent resolution scaling. When running at our native resolution, we're right at 51 FPS, and going up to ultra quality, we instantly are able to get right at 64 FPS, capping out our 800p resolution on our Steam Deck. Now, if we want to get additional FPS going up to quality mode, we do get 75 FPS, but again, guys, I highly recommend stopping there. But if you're a glutton for punishment and you need those additional frames, balance gets us up to 84 FPS, and performance mode gets us to 96 FPS. Now, lastly, and this is not really kind of the performance topics for today, but let's just talk in general, you know, Windows versus Linux on the Steam Deck. Now, I've seen a lot of people reporting that sticking with the Linux experience is going to be best because that is what uh, Steam has designed the device for. They're using all of their software engineers to fine tune this delivery in order to get the best gaming experience as possible. But on the other hand, though, we have so much support already baked into Windows 10 and probably Windows 11, that as long as AMD is able to provide us with graphics drivers, I think there's going to be opportunity for us to tweak this little Steam Deck in order to get an even better gaming experience. But let's not forget, with Windows 10, we actually get native support with DirectX, and we'll be able to utilize functionality such as DirectML or Direct Storage once those get released, and that's going to amplify our gaming experience even more. And I'm not exactly sure how that will translate into uh, the Steam OS, particularly because some of these features just aren't supported with Linux in general. 
With that said though, I really hope there's an opportunity to do some dual booting setups, especially if you've got the 256 or the 512 gigabyte versions of the Steam Deck, because being able to do a, you know, one-to-one -one comparison on the native hardware is gonna be super awesome. So make sure you guys hit subscribe down below and hit the bell icon, because once I get my hands on this unit, you guys know I'm gonna be testing out those features. But that's all I've got for today's video, short and sweet, just the way I like it. So guys, I appreciate y'all coming by. I hope y'all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one. And again, guys, if y'all were looking for that DLSS versus FSR video, it's coming.